This is actually very real. A lot of the frustration that American soldiers experience in Vietnam when they're on patrol is they get hit, but they cannot see the enemy. My name is Bill Allison. I'm a professor of history at Georgia Southern University. I've been a battlefield tour guide in Vietnam, and also I've written several books on the Vietnam War, including one on the My Lai Massacre. I'm back to look at some more Vietnam War movies and judge how real they are. So this is depicting the 101st Airborne Division's assault on Hill 937 in the Aisal Valley in 1969. Uh, became known as Hamburger Hill. Now the problem with this particular hill is it's pretty steep. And because of its steepness, and that the Pavan guys are well entrenched on the top and dug in, and also along the, the edges of it, on the slopes, it made it difficult for aircraft to get in and hit it. Now, the strategic value of the hill itself, it's not the, the, the physical hill. It is the fact that that, art, that that Pavan regiment is on it. You know, one of the strategies employed in the war by, by MACV, Military Assistance Command Vietnam, was uh, body count, attrition. The more we kill of them, the better. Attrition was just one of several strategic approaches we employed. Pacification was one. <laughs> Actually, this is very akin to a World War I battle with entrenched positions. They've got machine guns set up. They've also, of course, because they're already up there and dug in, they've got mortar sites pre-sighted. -pre so as the, as the airborne guys are coming up the hill, they're, you know, getting popped because they're in places that have been pre-sighted. Booby traps are synonymous with Vietnam. The VC, the Viet Cong especially used them all across South Vietnam uh, in areas where they knew American or Arvin soldiers might be patrolling. Uh, one of the most gruesome ones is this, they dig a hole and they put in two rotors with punji stakes in it. And as, you, as your leg, your foot goes down in it, it rolls down and it chews your calf up. Pretty gruesome stuff. The Pavan's got more equipment, so they can do more explosive type things. They can set up more, you know, claymore tripwire type things, uh, et cetera, because they have more of that equipment available to them. So that's kind of why, in this case, you know, you've got more of the explosive type uh, stuff set up than, than the punchy stakes. The airborne troops did ultimately take the hill after several frontal assaults. Why keep doing it? Why keep at it? Um, in part because the Pavan guys were up there. And I think the blood calculus, the butcher's bill was, we are doing equal if not more harm to them. And that, that was worth the cost according to the commanders. This is fighting at its grimmest. 72 Americans were killed. After the battle was over, looking around, they found over 600 you know, Pavan bodies. The controversy around this battle was the casualties, plus days later, the army abandoned the hill after it was taken. And that raised a lot of concern in the United States about, hey, what are we doing? I like Hamburger Hill. It's one of my, my favorite Vietnam films, and so I'm a little biased here, but I would give this probably eight or nine out of 10. I think this is good stuff. Okay, challenge flag. And with that helicopter coming in and staying stationary for so long in that valley, in direct fire, right, uh, they would not have done that. There would have been covering, you know, birds, helicopters around, you know, to, to, to assist if needed. Because if you stay still, somebody with a, I don't know, a rocket propelled grenade or an RPG, as they call it, is going to swack that helicopter. And sure enough, that's what happens. You know they're Viet Cong, they're not uniformed. That's how you can tell. Havin would always have a uniform. Women serving with the Viet Cong, yes, absolutely. Gender did not matter in this war for, for, for the, the Viet Cong or the, the Pavan, the North Vietnamese. For them, this is a, an existential threat. This is, they're fighting for their survival. One thing that's good here is the VC withdraw because they must realize that air support's gonna be called in 
to, to support the guys on the ground now. And now you've got two sets of wreckage to, to, to deal with. So they got to get the heck out of there. The whole premise of the film, of Spike Lee's movie here, is to show the experience of African-American soldiers in Vietnam, both as combatants, but also as veterans of the war returning to Vietnam. At least 300,000, if not more, African-Americans served in the war uh, in the early years of the conflict, especially the 65, 66, African-Americans were uh, in combat units and also casualties at a rate, uh, a percentage much higher than their percentage of the population in the United States. And this did not go unnoticed. Uh, people like Martin Luther King and others began speaking out on this. And by 1968, 69, this had actually kind of leveled out. I'd give it about a five, maybe a six. This is actually very real. Ambushes are very common. The Viet Cong especially use the ambush, in part because they don't want to be exposed in the open, because if they get caught out in the open, they're going to get hit with the massive American firepower. What they do is try to catch the Americans or the Arvin soldiers out on patrol. The VC would have been concealed, and in this clip, you don't see them. That would not be that unusual. In fact, a lot of the frustration that American soldiers experience in Vietnam when they're on patrols out in the jungle or in the mountains is they get hit, but they cannot see the enemy. You can see that the enemy has them pre-sighted. They've got their mortars, RPGs pre-ranged. That's why the Americans, Forrest Gump's people, have pre-arranged lines for themselves to fall back to what they're calling the blue line. And usually that's some sort of physical structure. It could be a ridge, it could be a tree line, it could be a canal, a road, anything like that. All that is spot on, absolutely. I just wish Forrest would put his helmet back on. How many times someone gets ricocheted off the side of the head with their helmet on, and if you don't have that helmet on, uh, that's all she wrote. In this particular scene, they do need to pull back. They're exposed on this sort of road embankment thing. They don't have a lot of cover. I got an airstrike inbound right now. They're gonna nade the whole area. Calling in an airstrike. This is very common. One of the big premises of the, the, for the Americans in the Vietnam War was to use the massive firepower that they had at their disposal. You gotta remember, this is a military that's equipped and trained to fight the Russians in, the, in, in Western Europe. Fighting in Southeast Asia, they brought some of those same ideas there. They didn't do it all that way, but certainly firepower was incredibly important. The problem is the VC are good at melting away. Once contact is made, they fire a bunch of shots, they melt away because they've learned that the airstrike or the artillery strike is coming. I gotta find Bubba! So now he's going back to rescue Bubba, and this is actually based upon an actual Medal of Honor citation. Sam Davis received the Medal of Honor for going back to retrieve actually three wounded comrades. So if you rate this on a, on a 10 scale, I would say this one's probably an eight. This is pretty good. What you have here in this scene is American POWs uh, being held by the Viet Cong. The bamboo cages are actually for the VC because that's what they've got to work with. Uh, you know, they, they don't have steel bars laying around. The Americans were mistreated. Uh, it wasn't great, but both North Vietnam and the Viet Cong in the South, uh, the NLF, the National Liberation Front, their leadership recognized the propaganda value of American prisoners of war. So you don't want to mistreat them too much. Uh, in North Vietnam, the famous Hanoi Hilton, that's where most of the propaganda footage is filmed about them being in church and doing a Christmas tree and doing things like that to show that they're being treated well and whatnot. Um, even though some of them had been there for like six or seven years by that point. The South Vietnamese, they ran the POW camps, torture, the Vietnamese police, national police, especially in Saigon, uh, General Loan. I mean, they tortured, assassinated. Of course, we had the CIA's Phoenix program. We're doing a lot of bad things here, and, and a lot of bad things are happening under our watch. For this, these, these guys are rogue. The leadership would not be happy with this, put it that way. <laughs> Uh, 
Brilliant! <laughs> this particular thing is a little outside the realm. This scene depicting uh, the VC making the POWs play Russian roulette. There is no evidence that that occurred at all. And obviously the way they're depicting the Viet Cong there is very brutal, barbaric, uh, you know, incredibly racist. Why? Well, again, we're talking the late 70s, the war is still very raw. We want to still portray it as that they were a dishonorable enemy. So to rate this on, on reality, uh, pretty low, I think. I mean, it's, it's got to be a three or four. I don't think it's in the realm of possibility. Nighttime attack, very common, especially during the Tet Offensive. The attacks were at night on the 30th, 31st of January, which is the big North Vietnamese orchestrated attack across all of, North, uh, of South Vietnam. Uh, they hit almost every provincial capital. The problem was, in order to undertake this, VC units and Pavan regiments have to get out in the open. They're exposed again to what? American firepower. And they get schwacked mercilessly. The Viet Cong are never the same again after this. So the positions there, that's all re very realistic. You would have had prearranged defensive positions, trenches, bunkers uh, with machine guns usually already set up as part of your perimeter defense. So the Pavan attack where they should attack, which is the main gate, that's the best way, place to get in. It, but the problem is it also might be the most heavily defended. It's the gate that the Marines have to use, right? So they can't have it mined or, or that sort of thing. So that's actually in some ways a weak spot to get in. So it's kind of a weird, I don't know, dilemma there for, for the enemy, but that's where they choose to, to attack here. very typical of the Pavan and the VC, mass wave assaults. Support for the war in the United States had been falling in the fall of 1967. You have the huge uh, anti-war, anti-draft protest in, in Washington, D.C. That was a big signal to the Johnson administration that support for the war was starting to erode. So he calls Westmoreland, the American commander of the Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, or MACV as it's called, back over to give a bunch of talks on the TV shows and Congress and whatnot to show that, no, we're actually making progress. So support for the war actually goes up. Public opinion polls rebound a little bit, right? And then Ted happens. The American people are kind of like, well, wait a minute, you told us we were winning. That doesn't look like winning. This particular scene I like a lot. I, th I think it's pretty realistic. It's it, the nighttime fighting, the assault on the gate, the, 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 you know, the entrenched positions for the defense of the perimeter, et cetera. Uh, I don't know, I'd give this a, a seven. Guarding bridges, very common. You often had U.S. Arvin forces on either side of a bridge over a river or a railroad bridge to, to protect it, um, unless you wanted that bridge destroyed. I'm not sure you could be much more exposed than being on a railroad bridge. This is based on a real incident. Uh, a unit murdered uh, a young woman who they had kidnapped and raped. Unfortunately, in Vietnam, as is in the case in, in pretty much all wars, soldiers do mistreat non-combatants. There are a few units that were notorious for their treatment of non-combatants. And right on cue, here comes your air power, which I'm not sure those explosions would have been that way. Now there you see an American river patrol boat gets in the way and gets hit uh, by you know collateral damage there. Uh, that would have been pretty common for a river patrol boat we had river, what we called riverine forces. So these patrol boats would have been going up and down the major waterways. I don't think it's the best duty to have because you're out there and you're exposed. Now these things are armored plated, they've got some protection, but you're really exposed out there, open to ambush from either side of the river and things like that. So it was pretty dangerous duty. I, I, gotta, I gotta rate this one probably a four because there's just so much of it that's just not, not right. So we've got a woman, Viet Cong fighter, using a tunnel. All very good. So for the Viet Cong to have uh, tunnels and 
uh, dugouts, uh, uh, trap doors and things, very common. When you go to Coochie today, you can actually go down in some of the tunnels, the actual real tunnels. And there's a few places where they have the trap doors. Now that's pretty crafty. I don't know if they actually had those little holes they could slide a grenade through or not, push through their rifle. You know, good news, man. <sighs> okay, she was just running around dodging gunfire and then she stops and just stands there. <laughs> it's like, get down. What they're doing is they're hiding the weapons so that when they do come through, they don't find anything on them and they can just play innocent. Hey, we're just villagers here, right? Um, you know, wasn't us. And you gotta remember, when this was made in the late 70s in Vietnam, this is really promoting, you know, still trying to, you gotta, you gotta show some unity between North and South. And of course, the VC were in the South, so you want them, to, you kinda wanna resurrect their role in the war uh, as part of the national narrative for the, per the, the purpose of unification. Just the way uh, the, the Smell of Burning Grass, that film, that Vietnamese film made more recently, kind of does serves a similar purpose. Vietnam is a young country now. I mean, I think 60-something percent of the population is under the age of 40. So they don't have a living, living memory of the war. But you want to keep that memory alive somehow, so how do you do this? Well, you do it through film. I like this film. Uh, I, I, it's... Again, when it was made and, and the, the message it's trying to get across, it's purpose of promoting unification by kind of resurrecting the Viet Cong role in the war. It's not perfect, but I'd, I'd give it a good six. So I have two favorite Vietnam films. One is from the early 70s called Go Tell the Spartans. And it's early in the war, it's in the advisory phase. And it's kind of foreshadowing the problems that were going to arise. The other one I like a lot is actually Good Morning Vietnam. Thanks so much for watching. Please click on the next video, watch some more.